Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Joe Glass Comics. I'm Joe Glass, I'm here to talk about comics. This week I'm talking about some of the comics I picked up last week, last Wednesday, which was the 2nd of June, and we're going to talk about some of the Pride releases as well as just general comics from that week. So first up, I have got Crush and Lobo uh, from DC Comics, part of their Pride collection with this gorgeous Pride cover by Chris Anka. It's written by Marco Tamaki. Art by Alan K. Nalban, with colour art from Tamara Bonvillain and letterist is Ariana Mayer. I'll admit, I'm actually not familiar t with the character of Crush. I've never really read any of the Teen Titans uh, books that she's in and that she's been introduced in, but I will say that I really love this comic. It was a really fun introduction to her and her world. Um, it's really well done in that respect, in that you get the sense that obviously she's been around for a while. You're not meeting her at the first story or the origin or anything like that but you are getting all the information that you need in this issue without it being bogged down with any sort of um, constant explanations or anything like that. In fact, a really big part of where that comes from is Crush's um, own narration um, captions, which are really interestingly well done. Like they, because they are reminiscent of her father Lobos and how many of his stories often are done. Um, they're not the same, but it's still very much her own, and very much her own sort of way and character to them. But there's a similarity in the sense of like, you get that this is Bobo's daughter. It's a really fun and interesting story. Like I say, it's a lot of setup, but it kind of um, sets up a lot of this slight fish out of water element, but that it stems from something. Um, and it's like a father-daughter relationship, which I think is going to be really interesting to see because we, we don't often see that kind of relationship um, in comic books, I don't think really. Um, I really struggle to find any sort of particular father-daughter, particularly father-daughter where the father's been absent um, kind of relationships, which are really going to be full of drama. And I imagine in this case, a lot of punching. Next up, I got Batman 109. This is the Pride variant cover edition by Jen Bartel, um, which has, of course, Batwoman front and centre, several other LGBTQ characters from the Batman mythos in the form of Ghostmaker, René Montoya, and Bluebird, um, Harper Row, um, and Batman, um, because, you know, I guess you can't have a Batman book without Batman on the cover. Gorgeous cover. I really think it's stunning, but obviously we're not here to talk about covers, we're here to talk about the comics. And Batman 109 is another fantastic entry in James Tynion's, um run on the series. It is honestly some of the best Batman comics I've ever read. A big part of that is because but it's not solely Batman focused. It's very much focused on the whole Batman family in a way. We get diversions with both Ghostmaker, who's a fairly new character, and uh, Harley Quinn, and also with a brand new character called The Gardener. Um, I won't spoil the relationship and the way why she's important because she's pretty damn important, as well as other characters such as uh, Father Gordon, um, who's back in her Oracle role. And I think it's really odd. I really enjoy Barbara Gordon being back in the Batgirl role. Um, particularly the Batgirl of Burnside era, but honest to God, I didn't realise how much I was missing her as Oracle, and like it's really great to see that aspect coming back into the DCU. Honestly, it's a really great story. It's very much in the middle of um, some big things which are happening, and I'm really intrigued to see where they go. Um, so yeah, I would say check out the current Batman run. Uh, there's a few trades out already because it started just before the big sort of relaunch post uh, death metal. So yeah, definitely check out Batman at the moment. Anything written by James Tynion, um, in, in fact, anything written by James Tynion IV in pe uh, period at the moment is just absolutely superb. The guy is on fire um, and I don't know how he does it. So like, honestly, check out anything he's writing right now. But yeah, his Batman run is superb. The art in this issue is by Jorge Jimenez and it's absolutely stunning. Like Jorge has been doing some really incredible work um, ever since just before he took over on Justice League. Um, and has just been really, really excelling. And like Batman is surprisingly a really good fit for him. Um, obviously we'd seen a lot of his work on characters like Superman and how it really worked really for presenting that bright, colorful, positive energy. And Batman's not very much that. And I wasn't sure how he would fit into the world of Batman. And, but honestly, his Gotham is gorgeous. It's stunning. It's modern, but gothic and it's just, 
I just love seeing what he's bringing to the table. Next up, I have Marauders 21 with this stunning Filomena's cover um, featuring Iceman, who is gay and has always been gay. And uh, yeah, okay, maybe he only came out in the last five, six years or however long it's been now. But yeah, let's face it, uh, Bobby Drake has always been gay as a window. There's been no denying it. I mean, just go back and read X-Men 1, folks. I mean, it's, it's right there and it always has been. Marauders issue 21 is obviously the big start for the Hellfire Gala, which, while it is not part of a Pride Month celebration, feels very fitting to the Pride Month time. It feels like a super queer celebration of uh, mutants, and it's really awesome to see how it's going. I think the most interesting way I, that this story particularly developed is that it sort of shows you the whole night. The whole X-Men line is going to be at the Hellfire Gala, so showing this one night from various viewpoints. And like, it would be easiest thing to think of would be like, oh, maybe each issue shows like an hour at the party kind of thing. But instead what Marauders uh, 21 does is it shows you everything. It shows you the start um, as people are starting to arrive and it shows you when people are leaving. So you kind of get that something big happens and it's really, really going to cause some waves. And I am now utterly intrigued to see just what that is. Finally, I'm going to talk about Batman uh, Fortnite Zero Point. Yes, it's a video game tie-in, but it's quite unlike most video game tie-ins in that it is, well, pretty good. Yeah, a lot of video game tie-in comics aren't great. There have been absolutely stunning ones out there, Injustice springs to mind. But, you know, a lot of the time they can feel a little railroaded. This doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's telling its own story. It just happens to be a world of Fortnite. But what is particularly interesting is it's actually sort of revealing things about Fortnite, which perhaps weren't always known. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how it plays out. We've been promised there's going to be some really, really groundbreaking reveals about the Fortnite plot and the mythos within this comic. So yeah, obviously any fans of Fortnite should probably check out this comic book and um, once you've finished reading the Fortnite Batman series, you should stick around and read more comic books because frankly, these are going to be something you will really love. Written by Christos Gage and with art by uh, Christian Duce. Um, it's really, really well done, really well drawn, like the art is clear and progresses the story well and the story looks ill is interesting. It's it's really quite a fun Batman story, um, whilst also having these connections with uh, Fortnite, which is not the kind of game which is really well known for its plot. Obviously, yes, there is a plot and yes, it's a mythos and it's one which has a lot of fans around it, etc. But obviously the game is primarily a multiplayer shoot map. You don't really expect there to be tons of plot for that kind of thing. Instead, this shows that, yeah, actually you can have a wicked amount of plot and a wicked amount of interesting backstory, which can be slowly revealed. Obviously, the other thing of interest for Fortnite players is each issue of this series comes with a special code to get you a free piece of equipment in the Fortnite game. Sadly, as I had moved to my new place, I still actually don't have internet um, set up here, so I haven't been able to play Fortnite. Um, so I've only had the first cosmetic uh, so far, which was the Harley Quinn one, um, which is superb. Who doesn't like playing as Harley Quinn? But like the other cosmetics look fantastic. So I am looking forward to downloading and setting those up once I've got internet and can play Fortnite again. But yeah, uh, I would say that if you're a fan of Fortnite, you should really be picking up the Batman Fortnite Zero Point. Wow, it's a lot. Comics, I think you'll really enjoy them. I think they're gonna be a lot of fun for you and they're gonna be a lot of interest for anyone who's fans uh, or intrigued by the deeper mythos of Fortnite. Okay, so that's it for this edition of our comics discussion reviews in Joe Glass Comics. Um, that's what I've been reading. Um, next, I'll update you next time with obviously some more that I've been reading, what I've been enjoying. Um, obviously, feel free to leave in the comments um, what you've been reading, what are you enjoying? What would you like to maybe see me review? Pop it down there in the comments and like I say, I'll see if I can get to it for you. Uh, similarly, I'm gonna try and put links to all these comics um, down in the description. So feel free to check them out and see if you can find those comics for your particular purchase and pleasures. Um, and obviously, finally, another reminder, seeing as it's Pride Month and seeing as, you know, my books just come out and everything, 
please, please, please check out the Pride Omnibus in all good comic book stores and all good bookstores right now. Anyway, I'm Joe Glass. You've been watching Joe Glass Comics. Thank you so much for joining us. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. It'd be great to see you again next time. So yeah, love you. Peace and happy Pride Month.